Hello and welcome to Agenda 2030. I am Toyin Nkamiang John. In the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, civil society organizations are major stakeholders. The role cuts across monitoring and evaluation for learning and accountability, advocacy, as well as localizing the goals for effective delivery. On today's episode, the efforts by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs to galvanize the non-state actors for effective partnership will be our major focus. That will be after this break with Adesua on the news in brief. Just stay with us. Agenda 2030. As a successor framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals. Designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want. With everyone on board, we focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. According to reports, over 50 million tons of e-waste are generated globally every year, with only 20% of that waste recycled. But Germany has come up with an innovative way to encourage people to recycle their e-waste in a sustainable and eco-friendly manner. Under the scheme, Germans can recycle their old phones and broken or damaged electronic devices in stores across the country and be rewarded with at least 25 euro instantly through a machine that offers an instant valuation and payment. Shoppers simply put their old devices in the machine to receive a voucher after which the machine swallows the device. The process is considered to be a secure, practical and sustainable way of getting rid of old devices while getting paid for it. Recycling of old phones or disused phones is very important, especially when it is considered that they contain precious materials like lead and nickel, which are poisonous to water bodies. So throwing old phones away not only leads to pollution of the environment, but also constitutes waste of rare metals. The United Nations identified single-use plastics as one of the world's biggest environmental challenges. In line with tackling this challenge, China is stepping up restrictions on the production, sale and use of single-use plastic products. Plastic bags will be banned in all of China's major cities by the end of 2020 and banned in all cities and towns in 2022. However, market selling fresh produce will be exempt from the ban until 2025. China also banned the importation of all plastic waste and the use of medical plastic waste in the production of plastic. Other items such as plastic utensils from takeaway food outlets and plastic courier packages will also be phased out by December 2020. The restaurant industry will be banned from using single-use straws and by 2025, towns and cities across China must reduce the consumption of single-use plastic items in the restaurant industry by 30%. Some regions and sectors will also face restrictions on the production and sale of plastic products, although it is not yet clear which geographical areas. The production and sale of plastic bags less than 0.025 mm thick will be banned, as well as plastic film less than 0.01 mm thick for agricultural use. China is also boosting recycling rates and is building dozens of comprehensive resource utilization bases to ensure more products are reused as part of its war on waste. In a bid to reduce carbon emissions, Germany aims to generate at least 65% of the nation's electricity needs from renewable sources by 2030. The German government has said it will phase out coal by 2038 as it looks to its booming renewable energy sources for power generation. A $45 billion compensation fund will assist the closure of Ignite mines and power plants and help reskill the sector's workers. 
to support economic growth, sustainable development, as well as tackle problems associated with climate challenges, a group of Ghanaian women and young people are building bicycles that can ply their country's bumpy roads out of bamboo trees. The bicycle can also be exported overseas. Ten farmers are involved in growing the bamboo, while 25 builders craft them into environmentally friendly bikes. When well treated, bamboo is stronger than steel and is found in abundance in Ghana. And in comparison with using metal, building bamboo bikes requires much less electricity, far fewer hazardous chemicals and promotes sustainable cycling through zero carbon use. Bernice Dapa, founder and CEO of Ghana Bamboo Bikes, says there are plans to build two new factories for manufacturing of the innovation soon. A move that will lead to employment of more workers and also help to curb unemployment. Recently, Nigeria joined the rest of the world to celebrate the International Day for Education on Friday, 24th January. Celebrated under the theme Learning for People, Planet, Prosperity and Peace, the 2020 edition of the International Day called attention of stakeholders to the important role of education in the achievement of other goals of the sustainable development. In Nigeria, the International Day was also another occasion to rally stakeholders for the huge task of accelerating SDGs 4, especially in ensuring that a huge number of children roaming the streets when they should be in schools are returned to the classrooms. This was the focus of discussion at a special event organized to mark the day in Abuja by the Federal Ministry of Education, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs and UNESCO. <laughs> To mark the 2020 International Day of Education, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President returned to Pilot Science Secondary School, which was equipped with digital teaching facilities, courtesy of the partnership between the office and a Chinese digital giant, NetDragon website. Dressed in colorful t-shirts with SDGs inscriptions, the pupils of the school welcome Princess Adejoke Orilope Adefunire, the senior special assistant to the president on SDGs, officials of UNESCO, Federal Ministry of Education, and other stakeholders to the school. The senior special assistant to the president on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Orilope Adefunire, in her address, noted that while inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning for all are central to the achievement of all the other 16 sustainable development goals, over 10 million children are still out of school in Nigeria, with girls making up 60% of the number. As we are celebrating this year, International Day of Education, let us be reminded that out of 10.3 million out of school children in Nigeria, 60% of them are girls. This is very, very unfortunate. And we must do everything humanly possible. Everything humanly possible, everything politically possible, and every support that we can gather, every partnership we can gather, every movement we can make, to ensure that all our children all over Nigeria, in the rural community, in the riverine areas, in the cities, everywhere in Nigeria must return to school. Princess Orelokpe Adefulura noted that the federal government is working to ensure all inclusive education in the country, as can be seen with the ongoing renovation of primary and secondary schools across the country. Noting that education holds the key to unlocking the huge potential of people on the planet, just as learning can empower people, build shared prosperity, foster peace, and preserve the planet. The presidential aid call for joint government stakeholders' effort to return out-of-school children to classrooms. She pledged that her office will continue to work with the Federal Ministry of Education, subnational government, and other stakeholders to ensure the achievement of the goal of returning 10 million out of school children to school. The Federal Ministry of Education has announced that 10 million out of school children will be returned to school. So we are going to work together with the Federal Ministry of Education and subnational government 
in our various states to ensure that all hands are on deck, working with the uh, international organization, the private sector, civil society organization, and all, including the local government, and other NGOs, non-governmental organizations, should come together to work and ensure that young people, these 10.3 million people are back in school. The Office of Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goal is ready for partnership to work with the Ministry of Education and to work with sub-national government where these people reside so that we can give them the best. Also speaking at the event, the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, said stakeholders must also consider the quality of education children are receiving in the country. He, however, said the administration of President Muhammad Buhari has shown commitment to quality education with the ongoing implementation of the Ministerial Strategic Plan 2018-2020 to developed to address the challenges confronting education sector. Malam Adamu, who was represented by Mr. Joel Ojo, the Ministry's Director of Tertiary Education, said strategies for the speedy implementation of the plan have been adopted. The Ministerial Strategic Plan has three result areas, in other words, three major key areas of emphasis, access, quality, and system strengthening, and has been aligned to the Sustainable Development Goal 4, target for effective implementation. The Ministerial Strategic Plan seeks to breach the gender gap in enrollment, retention and completion by addressing the problems of girls' child education and address the crisis of the inadequacy and low quality of teachers with recruitment, training and retraining among others. Strategies have already been adopted for speedy implementation of these plans in collaboration with relevant stakeholders. The UNESCO Regional Director in Nigeria, Yido Yaun, in his remarks said taking 100 million out-of-school children roaming the streets of cities, towns and villages across the country will require strong partnership of stakeholders. UNESCO jointly with all education partners on the occasion of the International Day of Education is issuing a call for action action for education. High-level political authorities and citizens, states and associations, teachers and parents of, t of students, everyone in their own way has a role to play in making the right to education a reality for all. And the need for civil society groups and organization actors and non-state actors to work together to accelerate the 2030 agenda in Nigeria as a decade of action begins was the crux of deliberation at a two-day retreat for civil society organizations put together by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs in Abuja. We have a report. The retreat, which had as theme CSOs and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in Nigeria, was designed to fashion out a well-defined structure for effective engagement between government and representatives of CSOs in Nigeria and a strong national network for localization of the SDGs at all levels, raise awareness and sensitize citizens on the roles they can play in the achievement of the 2030 Agenda. In tune with the 2030 Agenda of Leaving No One Behind, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs brought the CSOs together to foster strategic partnership and identify problems hindering the speedy actualization of the goals. The forum was also an opportunity for the CSOs to tell governments about their ongoing efforts and initiatives directed at the actualization of the SDGs ahead of the target date 2030. Discussions at the event focused on the review of the SDGs implementation process in Algeria, the role of the CSOs in the monitoring and evaluation of the SDGs for learning and accountability, localizing the SDGs in Algeria, 
the role of non-state actors, advocacy as a prerequisite for achieving the SDGs, community-driven development approach in the implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria, amongst others. During the session, the participants were also asked to provide comprehensive information and data for government to take action on. In her address, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs reiterated that to accelerate the achievement of SDGs in this decade of action, it is very pertinent for CSOs to work in collaboration. She emphasized that working independently will weaken their capacity to actively engage with public and private sectors. She assured the CSOs of her support as well as the commitment of her office to the attainment of the goals. We want the civil society organization to help us monitor the development, monitor what we are doing. If we say we have water there, the water must be functioning, the water must be implemented, water project must be implemented and not to function. Not that the one that we say we want to put here and we will not see the water. We want to put a school here, the school must be seen, being constructed and working for the people of, of Nigeria. The civil society organization have geographical spread and they get, so if only that is what they can do for us we are okay because they will help us monitor and give us feedback as quickly as possible i am so optimistic that we can achieve we may not get 100 percent but we will get above average if all of us are ready to work together we have the uh, support and the promise from the sub-national government at least for the state governors now to work with us the private sector is working with us. If society are pledged to work with us, other organization, people living with disability, women organization, youth organization, if they are ready to work together, because it cannot be achieved by government alone. So we need to work together and not to work in silos, to work together in synergy so that we can achieve. In the same vein, the senior technical advisor in the office of the senior special assistant to the president and SDGs, Dr. Bala Yunusa, in his presentation titled An Overview of the Implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals in Nigeria, emphasized the imperative of integration and mainstreaming of SDGs into the National Development Plan. Nigeria has a huge implementation context for the 2030 agenda. We're talking about approximately 190 million people, 923,000 square kilometers divided into 36 states and the federal capital territory and 774 of the governments. This is a huge implementation context by all standard. We're talking about 30 to 32 countries in one place. And when you hear smaller countries making progress on the SDGs, and we hear that Nigeria is not making progress on the SDGs, and that is, we, we argue, is its relative. The strategic approaches to the implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria can then be seen at two different levels at the national and at the sub national level. At the national level, we have the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President of the SDGs with this four-fold mandate. And how do we discharge that mandate? Is to work closely with the federal ministries, departments, and agencies of government to mainstream, if you like, to integrate the relevant SDGs into our sectoral policies and plans. While identifying finance as a major challenge militating against the implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria and the need to close the funding gap, the United Nations Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator, Mr. Edward Callun, called for active stakeholders' participation and continuous support of efforts to achieve the SDGs by the civil society organizations. He added that such support is key to making the SDGs a reality in the next 10 years. Nigeria is creating a lot of platforms uh, to leverage on innovative financing. For example, Nigeria is on the forefront of launching the first green bond, or listing it on the, on, the, on the stock market. There are opportunities for blue bond to look at the, the, the maritime ecosystem and how that can contribute to the SDGs. There are also other innovative financing that needs to be explored. The whole area of social impact bonds are also critical. Development bonds, 
public-private partnerships, South-South cooperation. Yeah, these are all areas that can augment uh, financial flow to support the SDGs. You have to have the people yeah, participating in this for it to make sense. We're talking about changing lives of people. We're talking about creating better future for, for young people. We're talking about creating hope for people. We're talking about living in a more equitable manner in society. That is all what the SDGs are talking about. Participants at the retreat gave insight into how their participation and knowledge garnered at the retreat will help them scale up their activities. We're able to understand how important it is for us to understand the priorities at our different levels. And we're able to understand clearly that you cannot work on the SDGs in isolation. It's a collaborative task and it's bottom up as an approach. And it's an approach that we all must realize that everybody has a stake in. And so when you build the capacity of even the communities to participate in the process, you see that your programs and projects are more sustainable and for a long time to come you they will take ownership of it and even scale up and expand on those projects to impact lives. This is a good medium to talk about how gender, how the SDG 5, 8 and 3 which we're passionate about is being you know it's being worked on. So this is going to be a great great deal a great great help. The presence here today um, is a statement by us to say that older persons should not be left behind. Um, if you look at the 17 uh, SDG goals, in one way or the other, they affect the older persons. What we do under our solution 17 is to look for solutions, innovative ideas that we can weave together to ensure SDGs are actualized. And what this has done to me today is to know where to stop and where to start. Collaboration is the key so that we can actually have governized action towards the implementation of SDG by not repeating what ABC is doing. Together here is going to help a lot because one, as we are coming together, we are sharing ideas, we are networking, and so we are knowing how the country wants us to work. And then we are also being informed of how we can harness and gather information and data of what we are doing so the country can put it together and know if Nigeria is actually making progress or not. At the end of the day, we now realize that um, uh, assisting each other will definitely make it easier to actualize the SDG goals before 2030. A whole lot of persons in this meeting are doing a whole lot of different amazing things and of course similar things also. And now we are all seeing the need for collaboration because for us to achieve these SDG goals in grassroots community, it requires collaboration. It was bonding and it really brought all the CSOs together. You know, so we know ourselves now. It was a good networking hub and we wish for the best in the future. Thematic breakout sessions to identify ways CSOs can further mobilize actions for the goals was held during which they came up with recommendations for funding, advocacy and capacity building. The retreat was finally brought to an end with the election and the inauguration of the leadership of the Civil Society Strategy Group on SDGs. Remember, you can always watch this program and other episodes by subscribing to our YouTube channels on youtube.com forward slash fresh news TV and youtube.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. You can also watch the program live on Facebook. Just log on to www.facebook.com forward slash fresh news NG and www.facebook.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. Follow us on all our social media platforms at agenda 2030 TV on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to drop your comments and share with your contacts. Do use the hashtag Agenda2030 and hashtag Agenda2030TV. And that has been the size of our program this week. Do keep a date with us next week as we bring you another refreshing episode. I am Tony Nkamiang John. Thank you for staying with us. Music